No. If there's one hero that screams elegant, it's Primal Beast. Yeah. With his a hero <laughs> trampling all over the ground. Requires a delicate touch. Hmm. Well, our panel was split on their analysis and their predictions of who's going to win this game three. Let's find out if we're split or if we are of similar mind, SVG. All right, on three, we, we're going to both say who we think is going to win this game. Okay. One, two, three. Aurora. OG. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I knew you were going to say some stupid <laughs> shit. Oh, OG. Oh, OG. Oh, OG. <laughs> oh, OG. The battle begins. It's Seb from the third rope with a tweet, but no, it's oh, going to be a brutal him away cut. from the arrow. <laughs> Not the earliest synergy shown here from Aurora. Uh-oh. I might have distracted them, but I feel like something always goes wrong for Jabs Mars early game. <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> this man is just, just struggleville for like the first 10 minutes, and then it's fine, but I don't know. The, the early game spellcasting. I... I'm not as unconvinced by Team Spirit's draft as I think that panel was. Okay. Tell me about it. I Why see, do you believe in it? Because I see the vision. Uh -huh. I see a world where Primal Beast, the largest strength gain in Dota 2, next to Tiny, the second largest strength gain in Dota 2, get infested and boosted to such meat levels that they're untouchable and then you add a sunray to that monstrosity and then you add a grim stroke swell to that monstrosity and you take it and you charge it in and you jam it into your opponent's face <laughs> that is a torpedo from hell my friend and if that comes together well we're going to be replaying that music at aurora's funeral I, I, okay, I can actually kind of jam with that. Um, I just think that Wind Ranger doesn't really run out of damage. Meat torpedo, Austin. <laughs> okay. Giant uh, okay. meat torpe okay. torpedo, and you launch it. It's cool. Therefore, I support it on instinct alone. But yes, it does look like quite a good Wind Ranger game in some aspects. And they lack a little bit of control for the storm if he gets BKB. But meet Torpedo. Mm. I think Storm is another hero that doesn't really run out of damage at some point with the Parasma build especially. Yeah, Parasma is going to be really good this game if they get yeah. their ET amp on top of it. You're running Power Shot in, Marana Starfall, Mars damage. There's so much magic scaling damage in this lineup. I do agree with what what you're saying. Like Mars, oh, I agree with the Torpedo analysis. I <laughs> not, I don't like the Thank meat torpedo. Well, nobody likes it, Austin. <laughs> nobody likes well, the I, meat torpedo. I, I think your mother would disagree, but... What the hell, dude? <laughs> We're live. Hello? Hello? It's just a Friday night for her. <laughs> she literally might be watching this. <laughs> what? What is wrong with you? I would never say that live. <laughs> like, I would say it backstage every time. <laughs> You absolutely would. No, I, I've never said anything you about think, your mom you live that, on air. You think that was the worst thing we've I use the cough button like a distinguished gentleman, <laughs> and I move on with my cast. That was uncalled for. I agree <laughs> with <laughs> Mars, Marana. Actually unhinged. And, and Elder Titan in some ways, like the, the way he amps up damage. I think that trio may actually, you know, kind of have a hard time uh, being able to burst down heroes until Earth Splitter comes in and until the Wind Ranger and Storm Spirit don't really run out of damage. You're really sucking that, aren't you? Man, he managed to get him. How did he get him? Blood Grenade? Had to be a Blood Grenade, right? Yeah, sure, man. Sure. Power shot, collapse. Oh, oh, he disappeared. What? Where'd the, he go? The wind realm took him. He got turned into air. <laughs> I mean, it's the flower thing from the Arcana, but <laughs> that looked incredibly stupid. He's back, though. Yeah, that. he's back after they give two kills to Aurora. So we actually didn't even talk about laning phase. Yeah, Are this, Aurora favored? This ET Winter Angel lane, I think I've talked about this lane before. This lane is incredibly good. I think it's my favorite ET lane in the current meta, just because Wind Ranger is arguably the strongest laning core if you play the trades well, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's dependent on matches, but like blind. 
Power Shot is just a hell of a spell. And the extra slow, the burst damage for the ET be able to guarantee him a favorable trade. Just a very strong lane, and it has put 23 in a prime position to carry this game. In fact, all three lanes are going Aurora's way. They have come to play in this early game. It was kind of crazy that they... I remember looking at that change and being like, they gave a slow to power shot, but didn't they didn't nerf the damage at all. Can't nerf the damage. What, why not? That's what makes power... It's power shot, not weak shot. Okay, well, then why did they give it to slow? I'm just saying, you can't, you can't like... I'm not Ice Frog. <laughs> ask... Why don't you ask him? I'm just saying that abilities are able... Like, if you have an ability that does more than 300 damage... That it probably shouldn't have a disable with it as well, right? Uh, black hole. <laughs> a, a regular basic ability. Come on. Uh, Fissure with the talent upgrade. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Lornoff gets ganked. Nice move. Something you kind of need. This tiny storm matchup is not the most fun in the the early part of the lane, right? For tiny. I feel like this is something we've not seen out of Team Spirit this series is the mid rotations being too successful for them. Like, like a lot of these games, it feels like they've missed on the big power runes. Laurel kind of got put on an island. That game when he went, when he was tiny, they just let him farm to blink, but they never made a move to him early. This is the first time I feel like Lornoff has been pressured in the lane by the supports, whereas Laurel solo killed him last game. That was good. But Aurora have kind of had their number. They're, they have brought people for these power runes every time. Unfortunately, they're going to lose it here with the three on two, but... A little unlucky. Collapse power shot move. slows him down. Collapse still going to be able to catch up to him for a couple more hits. Not enough, though. Yeah, double anything, brazier. Might still chase after him with a power shot. A hasted tiny. Going to run down Ollie. Tosses him into the river. Into the firebird. And Ollie is dead. Man, okay. that wraith is... So oh, good in this in this game. And there's a reason he took it early here. Denied. Utility is just massive versus the storm, the wind ranger, Mars, the ET who want to get chain locks off. You combine it with the uh, fire spirits to slow down the attack speed, so you can't even kill yep. it. Yep. Very nice combination. They they go back to it. And we're starting to see a meta develop at this tournament. It's an interesting one too because I feel like it's less item centric than a lot of the past metas and it's becoming more hero centric again which we haven't seen for a while it's kind of interesting uh, i'll be curious to see if some items start to drive the hero choices more as the tournament progresses but right now it feels like teams are just fighting over heroes specifically because of what they can offer in the game in terms of spell casting more than okay we're gonna pick an offlaner who builds shivas every game I haven't really looked at this uh, top lane too much, but I think the problem whenever you see Life Stealer is is this hero just able to exist in lane nonstop? And they're gonna try and put a stop to it. The arrow comes in just Wait, at the right what? time. He actually had a half second there, I think, where he could have yeah, raged. that, but that looked like he could get it. He did not know that the additional firepower was coming in. And Yatoro actually respect Tibbs' jabs. Wow. Let's see here. Yeah, surely that was a a frame enough to get it right. Yeah, rage is instant, so. Hmm. I mean, very, very good cool. gank. Very good gank. We're talking about place they're sitting there. They get him. Another power rune contest. I mean, Tiny's just a beast in these exchanges. They bring the Wind Ranger. Yeah, an early rotation from 23 Savage. I like it. I like that. That is a way to punish this Tiny on that rune battle. <laughs> they missed the power rune again, though. <laughs> but it will get forced out here, so you're not giving it to the tiny. Yeah. I mean, that's just unlucky, right? Though maybe Laura would have gotten that, to be honest. So maybe lucky, in a way. And more gold in the 23 Savage's pocket as he is climbing that board fast, man. He is having a tremendous early game here. This is similar to that game one where he just got off to a fast start and never looked back. This is not an easy matchup for Yator. I don't think there's any world in which you're going to convince me Life Stealer beats Wind Ranger in that three to four item range, you know? Right, yeah. Maybe some weird nullifier in action later. Maybe your team can dispel him and you can lock him Got down. Got him again. Pistol. Is and this yeah. the first damage? It is. Damn. A second kill on the Life Stealer. Man, I posed that question. Aurora's like, ah, let me start you right there. We already got this well in handed. Super they, nice. Uh, they haven't taken the tower or anything, but they've certainly shut down the Life Stealer a bit. I mean, when you dial lane as Life Stealer, it's a completely different hero. 
So two deaths already for Yatoro. They are very happy with how this early game is going. Ooh, we thought he was going to sneak a kill on Maposhka. Doesn't quite work for him. He's Arrow boom. cuts through. It actually hits the tiny. No that detection. is massive. And Moonlight Shadow. They don't have the vision. They hit him with the avalanche. 23 is like, wait a minute. They don't actually see me. I'm good. Maposhka, not Ooh. so much. Just chomped him down with the stapler. Tried to hit a stop there. Interrupted by the onslaught. 23 still trying to play outskirts here. Lorinoff collects the kill on the Phoenix. They gotta go for more. They could try. But those are big tanky boys. Probably don't have the damage for him. Early earn for Q. The Q knows some extra damage for the skirmish as well. I mean, their life's just so strong in these like random fights. For lotuses or runes or whatever it is. Though especially the levels Q has gotten out of top, man. He is He's gotten so much off those lifestealer kills, and now he can give it back into another lane. And Aurora are cruising here up 2k already. They really shut down Collapse, which is a big component of shutting down this team in general. He is, I still think, their biggest playmaker in terms of the team fighting and dictating how those go. Let's see if Q can follow up this momentum. 203 still got an earn charge, level 6.5. This is. Exactly where you want to be with this hero. Vessel would go a long way to help cutting down some of these big tank sure. boys. I mean, he has his choice, right? There's very good ore game. Greaves, Pipe are both very good here. Glimmers are good. Four staffs are good. What have we All the utility is really nice for kiting out this triple melee core lineup from Team Spirit. So would not be surprised to see him go that Greaves if he if he really wants it. Don't Even Yules is, are not bad here. Yules, these heroes going in, can dodge some of the, the Phantom, yeah. Fire Spirits. See what he opts for down the line. As Quick Smoke, they're going to get 23 Green involved again here as he's working his way towards Maelstrom. He's just so strong off the stats alone, and they're going straight back into mid. Probably looking for that Tiny, but they will happily take a Phoenix. What I think is really cool about that is that they, it's like a little twofer, right? They smoke two bottom didn't find anything, and then they used the rest of that smoke to get 23 into the mid lane. It's definitely forcing a lot of spirit off the map. And you're looking at that mini-map, it's heroes in the jungle. That means some extra tower damage, they'll get a glyph out of them as well. All the pressure in this early game has been Aurora applying it. Team Spirit continue to search for something around these runes. They're going to bring multiple cores. Trying to cover that power rune. Laurel just walking into a group of them here. Doesn't want to force it. First splitter, really well placed. Actually, his Laurel got him down to half HP. Now he's going to be pulled back by Lord off. Silence goes off, but it doesn't stop the Aurora flood of heroes running at this tiny. All five for that rune. And I mean, they didn't even get the rune, but they got Laurel. They are losing a tower in the meantime, meanwhile, so they kind of need to make this worth it. Is this the team we saw not do anything for 60 minutes yesterday? I'm confused. Yeah, they woke the hell up. They have definitely washed their face. Find another shackle, but no follow-up. Oh, got him on the edge. Oh, okay. damn, jabs. Great read of that situation. I mean, this is it's not spiraling yet, but this is a lot of momentum. A lot of momentum for this lineup that can take advantage of it. They're just going to pick you off on the map if you give them this big lead. Storm's going to set everything up. You have arrow follow-up on any of the stomps, the pulls, the shackles, the the spears. It's a great Marana game. This is exactly what you want in a Marana sort of ET lineup. A three cores who can go in, set stuff up with disables, and still offer you good single target damage. ET Marana just love that. They're going to play behind you all day and make the team fights easy. Because then every stun is a threat of you just getting 100 to 0. Yeah. And that just makes it incredibly spooky to defend these towers. Very difficult to take fights outside of a vision advantage or smoke for Team Spirit, who are still lacking that initiation power on the Tiny and the Primal. Jab's just going to make another flank, try and catch Ooh. the bird. Missed out on the God's Rebuke, trying to interrupt the dive away. This is a good, good attempt. Another thing I, I like about this uh, Aurora lineup, this is actually one of my favorite counters back in the day. You used to do Snapfire all the time against uh, Phoenix, but I really like the Marana, right? The combination, maybe it doesn't work quite as well as Snapfire, but the, the bonus is that you have better mobility. Get enough attack speed that you can challenge, you can kill the egg by yourself for early levels. It's a nice little extra bonus. Yeah. But. 
Wouldn't rely on it. Nice stop. Sets everything up here. Oh, it hits Maposhka as well. So, two for one special. Dang, they are rolling, man. This team looks good right now, man. Team Spirit just not taking the fight back. They're just happy to bleed a couple of kills and trade net worth. Try and come up with something later. Yeah, you have to fight eventually. Big part of this is definitely just having Life Stealer, right? Well, Life Stealer versus Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger can get involved. Life Stealer can't. Dyer's top tower. Especially when he got Arrow killed twice on lane. Yeah, that's for Very sure. Very slow game. Ooh. Jabs. That was the blink reveal, technically. Jabs just firing on all cylinders today, the reminding them who the CEO is. Bounty. Radiant are scanning. They will scan you, Toro. Dangerous to go in there without smoke. You just don't know where the defensive vision is. Aurora, what are you up to here? Kind of four stacked mid, and have been for the last 30 seconds. Seem like they're not sure exactly what they want to do here. Jabs is like, okay, I'm gonna go just push out top then. And if they're gonna be farming these two lanes. All right, here is uh -huh. what we've been waiting for. The infest bomb. That's right. The torpedo. It's coming. The torpedo coming. But they can't see anything. Yeah, problem is you need some sonar to ping out where Aurora is. They keep on missing on these initiations for Laurel. This is time you're wasting while 23 is a farming. Yeah, they are going to double back really quickly to this bottom lane. So they still might catch 23 with this. That's where their one obs is, They're going to start too. running. They have to dive into the tier two. This is going to be... A little scary. Oh. Shackle shot lands. He couldn't actually get the grab. 23 is slowed down, though. He is going to get grabbed by the rest of these heroes, but are they going to be able to get out safely? Supernova will protect them. That's a nice move from Mira to cover their... Oh, and they actually Laurel's got more. Here. Beautiful Soulbind catches the Mars. Double the toss. toss is over. Double toss finishes off the Mars. Laurel is under the shot of Lordoff. He's going to jump forward and might just be able to finish him off. He does with that last little dip. He gets him in the end. Ollie tries to go over the stomp, but Rage is back up for you. Toro. Oh, he's just climbing. Climbing to the back of that team fight. I don't know why I use that word, but I couldn't come up with anything else. <laughs> he just chomps through them. Four for one. Laurel makes it back to that fight in the right place at the right time. And just a sick double toss off the, the Soulbind there. A nice find from Collapse using the one deep obs they had on that map to find the one hero they wanted to find. Uh, they're gonna try. I mean, that's oh. a hard go. That's a very hard goal unless you shackle him off the creep. Yeah, I was thinking maybe he was gonna zip grab him at max range and then maybe hit the shackle. It's also worth mentioning that was a focus fire going into the blade mail on the primal, I think. Kind of just sealed 23's fate, though I don't think he was getting out of there. Uh, I think it was on the life shield, right? He died pretty fast. Either way, this blade mail is going to be an issue for him because when Collapse just charges in, you don't want to focus fire him. Yeah. It is kind of a problem when you can't actually target that guy when he dives so deep into your team. That's what I'm saying. The, the HP buff that Collapse is representing here with the blade mail and all the spells behind him is that's the strength of this lineup. Like, even here, you don't want to jump him here, man. It's not... Not an easy go. I also want to point out the Q. We were, we're discussing what he wants to build this game. He's going back for an Ags on this Marana. Yeah, you literally listed like yeah. eight utility items that would have been good this game, and he's going none of them. I, I, I disagree with this, but obviously it's a disagreement in, in philosophy, right? This item can pay off if the game goes really late. You start farming some waves. You get a lot of extra single target damage in the fight. He has a lot of arrow setups, so this Ags is very tempting because, you know, if you stun a target, you throw that arrow and gives you a huge amount of extra damage on these big tanky targets you have to bring down. I think all of that makes sense to me. But the buildup is very slow compared to something else. Compared to a mech or a Vlad's or a four staff, you would have it by now. 
Yeah. And instead, you're just building empty stats for 4K gold that gets there really slow. So maybe Jabs doesn't die in that situation, right? If you have the mech. Sure. Earth Splitter. Oh, it didn't actually hit him. They Not needed the that extra damage to finish off Collapse. And Glimmer Cape dive in from Mira will help him get away. So. so let's see if this Ags will pay off. Let's see if Q can get there and make it work because you are missing some decent net worth here off of him having a very good early game that could have translated into something more. At least right now. And they're losing that fight. Now it feels like Aurora, they, they were stacked quite a bit, but they were, it was, they were getting the payoff for it, right? They're getting kills and stuff, but now it feels like they're stacked up and as a result, getting out farmed by Team Spirit. Radiance Guess Middle who Tower has a Radiance? Attack. Now, now Life Stealer is actually a threat in these fights. Yeah, he's almost level 15 too. Yatoro is outside of those two deaths on lane. He's having a very good game here. That is a lot of drawing on the map. I think we know where Laurel and Yatoro want to go. Trajectory has been set here. He's a problem for their lineup unless the focus fire connects on him. He's a big problem. And like I said, he doesn't have to... He can just sit in one of these big boys, and let him go in, and see what happens. He doesn't have to immediately pop out either. You can see what that initiation looks like. He can just boost their HP. Infest is very strong this game versus lineup relying on spells. Blow up the Wind Ranger. Best target to catch here. They've got him. Nice chain now, with that Now, Ollie, four staff down from the high ground will help him. Earth Splitter is actually going to land on Laurel. That's going to be a hefty amount of burst damage. They get something in return. What's that cool frenzy hit, but he can't get it. Just another thing to help kite the life stealer. Uh, the dog getting walked here. Or we'll have to retreat. And he's immediately queued up that Yasha. He needs more move speed. Radiance top tower is under attack. <sighs> Outside of those kind of pickoffs, though, they kind of got there. I almost feel like Aurora needs to dodge fights during this really tough Radiance timing. You kind of do want your next set of items. You want this Orchid for Lornoff. Yeah. That increases initiation power a lot, particularly against these supports, but you might just catch this Lifestealer off guard. Yeah, his Orchid, dispel. Q's Aghanim Scepter, uh, BKB for 23. Like, these are all really big upgrades. Yes. And you're very close to thinking he's all up. So, chilling right now, not the worst idea. And they got the most useless shard in Dota. Congratulations, Ollie. You have just inflated your buyback cost. Congratulations. <laughs> Is that actually the worst one you think? Yeah, that's what that's what the text says. Increases your buyback cost by 300 gold. <laughs> wow. That's the, that's the Elder Titan shard. It's really nice. <laughs> I think it's the worst. I mean, the cooldown's nice, but it's rare that a second stomp ever decides too much with the reduced cooldown. Dude, it's such a it's a core difference. Phoenix or Grimstroke yeah. shard, so much better than Marana Elder Titan. That, I, that legitimately might be the only thing holding back Elder Titan from being like a tier one. Support. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of things holding them back. But the problem is if you give this hero any sort of consistent playability, he just becomes immediately broken. Yeah. We got the minimap flickering off the infest again. Beautiful. <laughs> They're going to probably smoke here and again try and use this infest HP while it's still really strong to... Jam the team fight. Five man smoke from Aurora on the map though. Can you get the vision to get the jump? And those big items, they got finished up a little bit, right? You have this BKB Wind Ranger. I say that BKB just finished for collapse too. It's recovered in this game. You're doing the Lotus. Team Spirit. That is not the target you want to go on. No, not that guy. 3,400 HP. With almost 20 armor. But who do you want to go on then? Laurel, he might just blind blink in. 
gonna get poked. 23 is gonna go for it. Oh, they're gonna kite this. He's can. going for the tiny and half his BKB That's has already been controlled up by the Primal Beast. He's starting to get back. They're trying to force Staffan backwards Whoa. here, but a charge on through. Knocks him out, collapse. Hits all three of those heroes lined up and they'll clean up some more. That was some questionable decision making, I think, there. I mean, at the same time, that's just a beautiful way to force this fight from Team Spirit. They send the Tiny in, the target you can't go on. He's immediately Glimmer Cape swelled, so they can bail him out no matter what. And they bait a roar out just enough that they come in into that Soulbind. That just steals 23's fate. That, those BKBs do nothing for you there when you're linked together. Yeah, that's a smirk of gotcha. Hook, line, and sinker. I mean... <laughs> I mean, if Aurora just stay in the trees, right? If they don't bite this tiny bait, that team fight is way stronger for them. Yeah. But they got pulled out just enough, man. Laurel just kind of like walked in there, said, go on me. I mean, sometimes that's the best strat in Dota. 23 obliged. It's too tempting. Well, you're certainly going to get some value off of that Ags for Q, uh, the way this is going. Might have to do a little bit of ratting with it, honestly. Jab Spear <laughs> accidentally hitting Laurel as he goes for the blink in. BKB TP out. Look at him away. No problem. This is a strong Aegis period, though, and a very strong hero in this game to have it on. As Yatoro can play hyper aggressive, this radiance is going to be very annoying over the course of two lives. Radiance bottom tower. I feel like Aurora are just going to try and dodge this. They did get that Marana Ags finished, so they can wrap some waves. They can cut some waves. Be pretty annoying. Yeah, Storm Spirit looks for the pickoff. Do it really well for them. But again, the crux of this game is really coming down to: Can you kill the big meaty boys when they group up? And so far, the answer's been no. So you just need more scaling damage here, more control. That focus fire really needs to connect on a good target. Do you like Ags being the choice here for Lornoff? He wants to get on the back line and just find a big clump past that frontline target, I think is the idea. Yeah, I mean, they've got a decent amount of AoE to combo off of it. I kind of get it. I just would have expected more single target damage. I mean, surely you want the Parasma at some point in this game. Yeah, 100%. But it's a question of when do you get it, what you can do with it. My issue is, I don't know if the Wind Ranger can follow up on the Ag Storm pull that well. It's kind of just the ET Stomp into, like, the Star Falls, and that is a lot of magic damage. But the problem is, are you going to even get there? As Yatoro is just knocking at your door 26 minutes in. He's got his Orb of Corrosion. He's got bonus minus armor from the neutral slot. And he's got that shard. Tiny got with damage, damage there, TPing top 23, cannot afford to get picked off again. He has had his net worth get dropped far too many he times. A power, power shot, it's going to reveal him. <sighs> and that's a DD Tiny waiting to clean him up. Insta TP's bottom, they're trying to close the map out now. Yeah, this is, this is one of those nice things about Infest, right? You infest in somebody else, they TP to a lane, then after you do that, you can TP to a different lane. Just like that, both side lanes, they flush him out. Aurora, no longer able to play there. Shadows take us. You're going to need one hell of a team fight to regain this map control right now, and I don't know if you're doing it into the Aegis. So you still have two minutes here if you're a Team Spirit to try and force the issue. They're Gotta only up by 5k on Team Spirit, but it feels like a lot more. Yeah, but that's 5k on Yatoro. Yeah. So that's like 10k on a normal Dota player. <laughs> Stupendous! It's gonna hit high ground again. He's got an Aegis to burn. Is Aurora going to fight this? They don't have the Aghanim Scepter yet on the Storm Spirit. I almost kind of wonder if they just say, give this up. Give up a Rax at 28 minutes to the first Aegis? That feels bad, man. I mean, if any team's going to do it, it's Aurora, right? Yeah, but they believe in their scale. They don't want to 
get pulled into a team fight they can't win. Come on, I mean, you do have spearback potential. This rage is really damn annoying. Maybe now yeah. he's a little far forward. They can take away yep. that Aegis. They do. So he's going to have another rage coming up, but there is a window here. He's not going to go for the spear back, and that's probably wise. Team Spirit were really looking to pull the trigger. If they tried to go on Yotoro, I think everybody was going to jump in after that. You also have to keep in mind this toss save can come out and kind of reset that initial go. Yeah, that's true. Another reason the Storm Axe could be pretty influential in this game. I mean, Lornoff has found a decent amount of farm here. He's not far behind. If he can get that completed, you pull two or three heroes into a stomp. That's going to do some serious damage. They smoke up. You know Team Spirit, after pushing in mid for so long, they got to correct their side lanes. Yeah, so. but Yatoro just drew their smoke Radiant for them. <laughs> they were a little bit... <laughs> they were split for like five seconds, and then Team Spirit, just like that, defensive defensive group up on their side of the map with a shield rune tiny that they're going to jump on. They do get the, the uh, Phoenix though. That's a big pickup for Aurora. Pulverize getting grabbed in the Wind Ranger once that again. Yeah, we... This Wind Ranger cannot survive against the Primal Beast. Oh, Collapse got him too. Stops does he see off he does. away and slams him down. They are going to get all three of these cores. Laurel might die. He does. So they get a two for four in the end to the favor of Team Spirit. A very healthy Yatoro now looks to take that melee barracks. That was a really nice shackle to finish off the tiny, but the <laughs> AOE coming in from Team Spirit is just absurd. You just clear through him. Highest damage that. done by Yatoro. Maposhka wanting to waste no time, uses Inkswell on one of the sleeping creeps from the Elder Titan stomp and dispels it so the creep will run down the lane so they can break backdoor protection literally like one second sooner. Every little bit matters when you are playing against Aurora here. At any minute, this game could go another 50. MKB done. I mean, this has already been no problem for Collapse to pulverize the Wind Ranger and kill him with Yatoro's help. But now, even the Wind Run won't protect 23 Savage from Yatoro's wrath. They're going to infest back out here. Team Spirit are just not giving them easy targets. Again, who do you go on in these fights? It's been Laurel, but when your best target is to go on the 3,000 HP Tiny with Sunray Inkswell behind him. <laughs> Good luck, right? Yeah. That, to me, is the power of life stealer in this draft. It just prevents them having any good initiation. And that's, their lineup relies on it. They, they don't have a carry that can walk in and just start casually hitting people and, and seeing how the fight develops. It's all in or nothing. You're committing the Ranger Beacon being focus fire. You're not. You're committing the Storm Jump or not. Otherwise, nothing is happening. They're still looking for that Storm Spirit Ags, but you are losing your base while you're trying to get there. And of course, that was an early first Roshan, so that next one's coming up soon. Yeah, no reason to hit that second lane of barracks when Roshan is coming up like this. Don't want to throw that one away to Aurora. So back away, back out, wait for Rosh to spawn. We'll give uh, a little bit of time though. I mean, Aurora are probably praying it's a late Roshan, so they have time to get 23 Savage, another round of items. He's got Manta, now he's going to go back for Lincolns because this Pulverized has been destroying him so badly. I mean, honestly, the pickoff game from Aurora just hasn't been there. I think it's because they, they really lack some lane shove. I mean, this Marana Ags, I think, was supposed to make up for it a little bit, but by the time you get it, the map's compressed a bit. And instead, it's been Team Spirit proposing the threat with Infested Tiny that caught the Wind Ranger top once, caught some other heroes mid. Aurora's biggest strength or lineup to me is like this storm pull into an arrow, the Wind Ranger finding somebody on the side of a map, maybe an arena that's laying up. If you can split this ball up, you're way happier taking those engagements, but so far it has just been smashing your head into this brick wall five on five. And I mean, Team Spirit will welcome that. They have all the HP just sitting there waiting for you, hoping you will break your head against this Primal Beast Carapace. And I have a funny feeling that Aurora is going to do just that. They're approaching the high ground ward. Collapse. 
He's well set up to go for it here. Inkswell is on him. He didn't immediately go for the onslaught charge in. He's just going to let Aurora keep trying this. Those have a gem, so that Marana ult was not necessarily doing a lot, but he will wait it out. Again, the clock is ticking here for Aurora as Roshan is going to respawn. Team Spirit know it. No reason to give the fight to Aurora. They will just camp their OBS. I mean, there's no way you should take this fight in the str like running straight through this area. You, like, surely the play is to wrap oh, around they're gonna somehow. Do it. They're going to go for it. BKB immediately blank. Grab the Storm Spirit and he's dead. Now, 23 Savage does have a freer game because of that one. They do manage to cut down Laurel and go no for supports in the back line. So this is not too bad. Yotoro has had to spend a lot of his time inside of this arena Can the due Ranger to get the out? range wearing out. But 23 needs to get outside of the range of this guy, and he can't get outside of the range of open wounds. MKB steals his fate for sure. That Inksville move speed has been huge in oh, these fights. He blinked, did not get hit by the spear as a result. The jabs throughout to try and help out Q. Inkswell got him on the edge. Well played by Maposhka. Did get the troll camp though, that, that's value. Mm, very value. Uh, no, if they're not even gonna go for Roshan. They are gonna take some buildings here. Yeah, mid lane was pushed in, so backdoor protection is down. I mean, you called it, man. Pushed into that high ground ward storm first. Radiance. <laughs> A bold move by Lornoff, but it does not pay off at all. His Team Spirit insta-jump him, take the biggest target out of the fight. That was the Ag Storm they needed to pull them back in that 5-on-5. Five five. Gets nothing off. Oh. Back to our protection went up. Are they going to be able to eat through it? I don't think they... Oh, they do, actually. Got okay. it. The yeah, Toro is just that powerful. He's too powerful. Dude, his net worth is out of control. To see this kind of differential on a life stealer is, yeah, it is impressive. Not the fastest farming hero in the game. For He's sure. just done it through the fights, man. He is just chunking them. And there's no real way to bail out your storm in a situation like that. You can throw down the stomp. You can throw the earth sweater, but everybody's going to be spell immune. Good luck. Jabs with a Hex now. Okay, that's some significant initiation power. Does he want this Primal? Is there any way he can catch? There's a Creep running around, too. That's a Yotoro. Stealer. Problem is, Yotoro's been using the Infest so well. He is, he is never in a position to get caught by any sort of jump from Aurora. I wonder why he's opted to just run around in this Creep, but it looks cool. I, I think it's vision. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. This is such. See, this is the ultimate taunt. Like I dare you go on this little neutral creep. Hey, right, Team Spirit, the, the mid and bottom waves are pushing in. Yeah, they have base. Aurora problems. has to do something eventually. It's the same situation as bottom. Team Spirit are not gonna jump you. They are just gonna sit here. You're the one who has to respond. You are the one who has to force the issue. A game of patience. A battle of wills. Who will blink first? Dyer are scanning. The creep. Going in. Killing killing the wave. <laughs> Got it. He comes, he comes out of the creep. Okay, time to force Aurora's hand by doing Roshan. They're gonna soft do it here, right? This yeah, is Roshan's like gonna roar command. and then they're gonna back out probably. Or not. There it goes. They just don't want Yator to get half HP off this or something. They're just trying to bait him in. They see Q in the base, but he'll TP out. These lanes are going to start adding up, man. Yeah, Q didn't even really clean out the creep wave. You lost a barracks bottom for this fight. You are all in on it. Another roar. 
Arrow scouting things oh, out. Hits Laurel. Do you smell of damage with the spirit amp? Yeah, and a power shot added on top of that one. Nobody wants to jump on the side of Aurora. They're going to Moonlight Shadow start wrapping their way around, but they know about the vision that's in lane. There's so many good wards here for spirit. Oh, they have this vision that on the side as well. They actually jumped onto Q, and Lorinoff goes for the back line. He spotted the Phoenix and wanted to go for that one, but Jabs couldn't really follow it up. So now Jabs going to be grabbed during his BKB as he tries to retreat back and just gets demolished by Team Spirit. It's the last team fight. It's just a question of who gets out. Maybe 23 can chase after Collapse here. He actually has him dead. Okay. Got him on the Focus Fire BKB, but the problem is once the BKB wears out, if the Life Stealer grabs him, he's dead. And that's where Lorinoff comes in to try and intercept, oh, but silence. he gets hit by the Hex, is hit by the Silence. And now he gives up his life to spare 23 Savage. Mira, this is the same as those other Hex games. He is always on point with these clutch Hexes in the late game. And that's a problem because you cannot find this Phoenix. The one time you found it with Lornoff, that fight is already a disaster. Gem recovered, or stolen I should say as well, and it's just an impossible fight. Where do you get the angle versus lineup? You, you almost wish you could infest the Wind Ranger into the storm and jump your Wind Ranger deep or something. I, I don't know. Abyssal. I mean, this is just. Now, this is the nightmare for Wind Ranger. Abyssal MKB. When you're this far ahead, you're just hunting him now. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Takes too much to kill one of these other cores. It just always means his BKB win run wears out, and yeah, Yatoro will catch up to him. He has that one six or seven second interval to get something done. He kills Collapse, but then Yatoro just hunts you down. And I also want to point out that Inkswell has helped Yatoro a lot in these fights. Yeah, yeah. The extra move speed alone with it, you know, or the stun just lingering there, all he has to do is follow this Wind Ranger. He doesn't even have to hit him. The Inkswell will eventually catch up to him, stun him, and then you're gone. It's helped him a lot. Uh, the small synergies here for Spirit really counting in these teamfights down the road. Aurora hanging on by Knife's Edge. One more lane of Rax down, 15k and an Aegis. Dare I say it, Austin, but... Allies disappear. The Meat Torpedo... <laughs> ...has proved too girthy here. Meat Torpedo comes for us all in the end. Now they've got a little cheese to go along with it. Lincoln's for 23. I mean, again, is this Lincoln's... Like, you need it, but... It feels like you've got to kill Yatoro or Bust at this point. Yeah. You have to eliminate the problem in the fight, which is this life stealer, and you're gonna have to do it twice, as Team Spirit are likely gonna seed your high ground right now. A decent late game upgrade right there. Shard for the tiny. He is quite. Maybe this back. is where they get it though. Scythe will take the. A oh, missed out on the spear there. I mean, they have the swell anyway. Yeah. I, I think. What happens if you? Activate the swell on the middle of while you're being speared. Radiant's middle tower is under you just attack. stop being speared? I don't know. Well, maybe we'll find out. Either way, I think they should be spearing him back. Yeah. Because they want to go for this play. That's what I thought. Create a larger gap, make the Grim Blink in or something. It's probably just so scary against that scythe of ice. Yeah, though. it is. If you blink in with this Mars, there's a decent chance that you get blink pulverized, you get sight, you get... Soul bound. I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Radiant oh, <laughs> caught him on the corner camp. Not enough to kill him, but still impressive. Collapse still tried to chase after him, too, inside the base. 5,000 HP. Double Havoc Hammer as well for these meaty boys. Illusion. Just a couple lads out here playing Dota 2. Five thousand kilogram beast approaches the high ground. You thought the heart meta was over. Yatoro begins. No, they're gonna try and go up to this rage. Tried to go for the spear back, but got Yules. 
Instantly sights. Arrow trying to stop some of these heroes. Larnoff actually gets a jump, but Mira still has the option. Use the focus so fire. Mira can't commit in. Took out the other Titan in one shot. Laurel catches him, blows him up. Now they got the Supernova pulverized combo on top of the Wind Ranger 2. And 23 does not have buyback where all he did. So it's now four versus five. Four versus six, really, with the Aegis still up another on this life stealer. Yules. Another Yules. All of these initiations just being countered time and time and time again. Another buyback, another jump, another attempt at Yotoro's life that will not work for Aurora. They cannot kill anything in this damn game. There's way too much bailout, way too much save, way too much HP to burn through. They're pushing to the enemy fountain. Will Yatoro dive it again is the only question that remains. Get silenced again, and that's going to be a dieback for Lordoff. He has opted not to dive the fountain. No, he's thinking about it. He tells Laurel to. And once more, Yatoro will end a game in the enemy fountain.